Hi, this is I'll explain. This time I will explain the Jilgok Cannon. Jilgok Cannon, model number MS14C, is a medium range support mobile suit that Xiong should probably deploy sooner in hindsight. But before we get into that, let's start from the beginning. We have covered the development of Jilgok and their standard beam weapons. However, Xiong could have had it a lot worse. That is because Xiong did not know if they could produce their own ECAPs when they begin the development of the Jugok. That is why Jugok needs to be based on the GOG, the first Xiong made mobile suit with miniaturized beam weapons, even if it has a lot of limitations. Since Jilgok needed to be an all-terrain mobile suit, or at least be acceptably effective on ground and space with as little work as possible, it cannot rely on water cooling system like the GOG. Thus, it would not get all the power of GOG to power beam weapons without using ECAPs. The answer is the cannon pack. A backpack with auxiliary generator, mega beam cannon, and movable thrusters. This would not be a viable solution if Xiong didn't plan for Jilgok to have modular packages. And proving Xiong's idea of streamlining all mobile suit parts is a right direction, even with hindsight. Although the cannon pack is more of a backup solution since Xiong wanted their new standard mobile suit to be Gundam-like, after all, while Invasion of Earth was not going well by any stretch, Gundam or Gundams to be precise, Spear Herring Federation counterattack was what really tearing Xiong's battle lines, at least without admitting Xiong's own strategic mistakes. And so, despite the Jugok being complete before Xiong decided to retreat from Earth, its wider deployment was delayed to the final line of defense, Abuaku. And so, while standard weapons, or ECAP for those special weapons, or more precisely, manufacturing of ECAPs for wide deployment of those standard beam weapons for the Jugok were still being figured out. Xiong decided that the cannon pack should be developed into a full fire support package. Since at this point, Xiong was considering retreating from Earth and acted on this shortly after, they would need to plan for future campaigns where Xiong would be hopping in and out of Earth. Again, we know this never happens, but it made sense for Xiong at the time. Thus, Xiong would be building entire new fleets carrying Jugoks, and these Jugoks need to perform multiple roles, including Jugok-based fire support to keep up with main units while keeping the logistics streamlined. Before we jump into what makes Jugok Cannon the medium-range support mobile suit, we should talk about the concept of medium range support mobile suit. Obviously, Xiong had provided weapons of all the ranges of engagement for the Zaku, the Jugok's predecessor, and they did very well in small skirmish before the outbreak of One Year War, as well as the Battle of Loom. The one battle that marked mobile suit to be the defining war machine and work machine of the Universal Century. However, despite the Zaku's versatility, Xiong found their range wanting when they invaded Earth. Unlike in space, where Zaku can keep up and outmaneuver space jets, Zaku's are resorted to walking on Earth outside of their mothership, which means they would be easily outrun, outmaneuver, and outranged. The first medium support mobile suit for Xiong is the Zaku Cannon. A Zaku 2 with a new weapon backpack fitted with a pair of rocket launchers and a large caliper cannon or getting gun. First being deployed as mobile AA support, using extra firepower and range compared to the standard Zaku 2 to fend off Federation aircrafts, and later being used against Federation mobile suits. The medium range described how the Zaku cannon has longer effective range compared to standard Zaku 2 since the standard Zaku 2 or Zaku 1 
detonated fighting range is a lot shorter than those of space battleship used to. Thus, they are described as short range. We will start from the head as usual. The head once again looks different at first, but it is pretty much the same design as the Saku Cannon, which does not have pipes on the side, but a large radiator as the mouth. Additional optics is added on top of the head, providing a secondary reference point for aiming and increase the situation awareness of the Jugok Cannon. Back fin is still here for extra cooling like the base model Jugok, the A-Type, but the side ribs are different because there are no pipes running on the side of the head. Torso and legs are practically the same as Jugok A-Type, but they are designed to bear extra weight of the backpack module. Do note the backpack is attached to the back of the chest block. It doesn't inhibit the central block to be used as an escape port. The Jugo Cannon's arms are pretty much the same as A-Type's arms too, except the forearms are equipped with weapon ports instead of auxiliary generator and thermal thrusters. This is mostly because the Jugo Cannon has a bigger auxiliary generator on its back in the cannon pack, so the forearm spaces are free up for other options. The standard forearm weapon ports for the Jugo Cannon is a triple barrel missile launcher and a buckler. The triple barrel missile launcher is three missile launchers strapped together. They are all magazine fatted and used to load with HG warheads to provide plenty of coverage and volume of fire. The buckler is a small shield, mainly installed to balance out the weight of the missile launcher. And since the Jugo cannon is supposed to be providing fire support behind the Jugos, it does not need the full Jugo shield as much as those in front and Jugo Cannon is carrying a lot more weight to begin with, so saving some weight by not carrying a full-size shield would be ideal. However, Mobile Suit Combat is very fluid, so it is possible for some enemy to slip through the front line or flank from unexpected angles, or there are times where the Jugo Cannon needs to move to the front for close support, so having a buckler for close combat defense is necessary. And now we come to the literal cannon pack for the Jugok Cannon. It is a combination of a Mega Particle Beam Cannon that does not rely on the ECAP technology, an auxiliary generator to top up the extra power needed to drive the said cannon, and extra thrusters to provide extra thrust to maintain the Jugok Cannon's thrust to weight ratio. The Beam Cannon has a lot of elevation so it can be used for anti-air on earth. It also fires a larger beam bolt compared to those fired by Jugok beam rifles. The thrusters are gimbaled so Jugok can get extra thrust whether it is standing on the ground or flying through space head first. Since the Jugoks can since the Jugok cannon spare is occupied by the cannon pack and does not carry a shield a holster clamp is added on the back skirt to hold the beam Naginada. It is also likely designed for the Hit Hawk or the Hit Saber, since the development of the cannon pack was done in case Zeon failed to manufacture E caps for Jugok's beam weapons. Jugok cannon can still use the beam rifle thanks to the cannon pack in combination with its large main reactor. Jugo Cannon didn't get to see any action on Earth, at least during the One Year War. It was later being used by all sides after the war like Jugok. However, they are still rare because Zeon decided to focus on producing A-type Jugok before their defeat, so the number of cannon packs produced was relatively low. However, the C-type had Triple Barrel Missile Launcher and Buckler are quite popular among ACE pilots or regional customizations. Since Jugo Cannon is a support mobile suit based on a relatively powerful base model, they were being used by Zeo Insurgents almost 20 years later, near the end of the first universal century. Jugo Cannon, while having its development being turned around several times, still maintained its relevancy decades later 
and if Xiong didn't insist on mirroring the Gundam, but instead trying to marginalize Federation's advantage in amassing firepower on their mobile suit by deploying the Jugo cannon sooner, they might actually get to keep Solomon and Abawa cool and earn their independence with a ceasefire. But that's very much not Xiong's mentality at the time and Jugo cannon remains to be overlooked like the beginning. Thanks for watching.